Hello, everybody, and welcome to this special video rundown of this Sunday show when we return to the Portsmouth Guildhall, one of our favourite venues. We're still experiencing the fallout from the Revolution Rumble. We've had the 229 and live in Southampton since then. And what an explosive Southampton show that was. If you missed it, as always, you can catch it on RevPro on demand.com. As always, I'm joined by Andy Quild. And Andy, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. I'm looking forward to another fantastic afternoon of professional wrestling coming up um, this Sunday at the Portsmouth Guild Hall. As you said, Gio, we're half the heels of the Revolution Rumble, but there's no slowing down um, for Revolution Pro Wrestling as we're approaching a very busy period for us. I mean, we're having a little break after this uh, this Sunday's card, but um, we're looking to add some events in May, so watch this space. Um, and we're heading into a very busy June period Um as we, all roads lead to Epic Encounter 2023 and beyond. So it's uh, more so than ever, perhaps, a great time to be a fan of Revolution Pro Wrestling. Absolutely. The cards are just consistently stacked. The talent are hungry and you can see it in their eyes. And uh, talking of talent where you can see it in their eyes, a very exciting match that's been added to this card. We have uh, Will Caven taking on Jordan Brakes, who has been turning heads ever since his debut just before the Revolution Rumble. And then in the Revolution Rumble, who could forget that incredible moment he had with Zack Sabre Jr.? Yes, yeah, stylistically, Jordan Brakes is a completely different animal to anyone we've got in Revolution Pro Wrestling um, on a regular basis. Um, a throwback style professional wrestler, a great technician, um, world class Matt Wrestler um, is Jordan Brakes um, and one of the few people who it would seem can match Zack Sabre Jr. toe for toe, hold for hold um, and it was, as you said, Geo, fantastic at York Hall Bethnal Green when we saw that that high level wrestling back and forth, um, hold and counter hold between Sabre Jr. Um, and Jordan Brakes. So listen, Brakes' credentials speak for themselves. Um, a great addition to Revolution Pro Wrestling roster. Um, but in Will Caven, he's facing a completely different proposition. Um I think something you mentioned about seeing it in a wrestler's eyes, you can see it in Will Caven's eyes. He's, he's scrappy. Um, he's, he's, I dare I say enthusiastic, but you know, he, he's just an uncontrollable ball of energy. He's unpredictable. Um, and he's a disruptor. He's proved that since he came in to revolution pro wrestling at the tail end of 2022. And he's been somewhat of a revelation when it comes to the cruiserweight division, when it comes to revolution pro wrestling and making an instant impact. So this is really going to be a stylistically interesting and contrasting matchup that they say styles make matches and it may never, Never be a more, there may never be a more appropriate term said when we talk about Will Caven and Jordan Brakes. Absolutely impossible to call, and uh, that in large part due to the unpredictability of Caven. But like we say, um, Jordan Brakes has proven he can grapple at a world class level, um, and it's whether he will be able to initiate that game plan, whether we'll be able to take Will Caven down to the mat and work his game and stay with his in his element, um, that may be the key to victory for Jordan Brakes. Like I say, absolutely impossible to call, um, but another first-time exciting pro wrestling matchup coming to you courtesy of Revolution Pro Wrestling. Completely agree there. It's going to be impossible to call, but we're going to have a fantastic time watching it. And as you said, styles make matches. And at the other end of the spectrum, we have the heavy hitting match two arguably two of the biggest men we have in revolution pro wrestling are going to go at it in what the fans are going to be calling a hoss fight it's joshua james going up against blake and blake has really been making an impression since his debut in revolution pro wrestling couldn't quite get the job done against luke jacobs but luke jacobs is a completely different animal to go up against but we saw him use his size and his strength to really push luke jacobs to his limits yeah, and we saw um, just a real glimpse of his power in that Revolution Rumble as well, didn't we? Um, Powerhouse Blake is the real deal. Uh, he's a hard hitter. Um, that that smash mouth, in-your-face style of pro wrestling um, he likes to to adopt is, is something else. He proves to be a threat to any single member of a Revolution Pro Wrestling roster and without a doubt one of the most powerful members of our roster. Um, but then you look at uh, Joshua James, 
And he possesses many of the same elements as Powerhouse Blake. Look at that match graphic of a pair. They look so, it's like a mirror match, isn't it, between the two? We saw them come to blows in Southampton this past Sunday. Um, Joshua James really triggered, I think, by um, the actions of um, Brendan White earlier in the night, the way Brendan White was trying to push our contenders, more specifically David Francisco around um, Joshua James having a bit of a chip on his shoulder, not wanting to have the perception that a contender is a lower level than anyone else on the on the roster. You know, it just means that in his mind, they're working that little bit harder to get to where they want to be. You know, the end destination, the goals are all the same. And, uh, uh, you know, at his most base level, we're all human beings. And Joshua James, I, I really feel like after seeing the way David Francisco was thrown around, um, he wasn't going to stand for any of that bullying. Um, and uh, I say bullying, but Blake was frustrated in defeat at the hands of Luke Jacobs in, in a contest that he came so close to winning. And I think he ran Luke Jacobs a lot closer uh, for his money than many people would have predicted um, this past Sunday. Um, and they, they, like I say, the pair came to blows um, and they were two big men just throwing with careless regard. Um, and I think that's what you're going to see on Sunday. I don't think this is going to be, you, you, you know, I mean, you called it a contrasting style to the previous match we talked about. I don't think this match is going to be pretty, um, but I think it's going to be exciting because these two men, they're going to just swing for the fences. Um, there is that added element of bad blood, thanks to this past Sunday. Um, and I, I, for one, can't wait to see it. You know, it's a, another style of wrestling that I love to see. Um, two big guys just swinging for the fences. And, you know, I've, I've gone on record numerous times in saying that a great professional wrestling show is like a great buffet. There's variation. There's a little bit of everything. And, and that's really what I think you're going to be seeing this Sunday. Absolutely. It's variety that makes the card and just a big heavyweight clash. It's absolutely timeless. Uh, continuing on with the card, we have Connor Mills taking on Cameron Kai. Cameron Kai, of course, incredibly impressive in Southampton just gone. And Connor Mills, we've said it time and time again, he continues to go down this dark path, this treacherous path. Time and time again, we see him with the Cruiserweight Championship in his hands, something that he feels has been robbed of him twice now. And uh, you just know he's going to be taking that aggression out on young Cameron Kai. Yeah, well, listen, Connor Mills has made his mission statement perfectly clear. He wants to he wants to start creating history in Revolution Pro Wrestling. He wants everything to be about him. Of course, uh, he's more infamous and famous right now. Of course, the man that ended the career of his mentor, Eddie Dennis. Um, Connor Mills is without a doubt a piece of work. He's vicious. He's nasty. Um, he's a striker. Um, he's got those educated feet. Um, you know, he's, he's a great submission artist as well. Um, you know, he's very much an all-rounder. He believes he's the uncrowned, undisputed British cruiserweight champion. And if he's going to continue to stake his claim to that gold and earn himself another match, which arguably... Despite the circumstances, I think the way that he uh, in the way he won the contest against the champion Robbie X on Sunday in that non-title match, you really think that Conor Mills is due a shot at that British Cruiserweight Championship um, in, in the near future. Um, and especially after the confusion at the conclusion of the, the initial contest between Robbie X and Conor Mills in St. Neots. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, just check out RevProOnDemand.com. And Mills is going up against a guy in Cameron Kai, who never fails to impress, just 17 years of age. He's been wowing people. He's been training for just over one year. Um, it's uh it's just it's just it's approximately a year since he's been competing in professional wrestling matches. He um had his debut match, I think, three months in. Um, that's how good he is, and he continues to really just take everything in his stride. He's not going to be intimidated by the bully boy tactics of Connor Mills and by the aggression that Connor Mills brings into the contest. Um, he's an innovator uh, and he's certainly a star for the future, but Cameron Kai has really been asking questions um, at the top level of our roster um, and, and really starting to, to suggest that his time is a lot closer than people think. And perhaps even his time could be now. Um, it's a very big career defining year for Cameron Kai um and listen if Cameron Kai falls he's going to have falls on the way and that's what happens when you're you know you're a young professional wrestler but it's the way you pick yourself back up um but at the moment Cameron Kai like I say just keeping that head on his shoulders Connor Mills going to be trying to take it off, off obviously um but uh he's you know he's keeping a cool head he's staying composed and uh 
and he's doing things the right way. Hard work pays off, and and Cameron Kai is continuing to prove that time and time again. Um, like I say, this is a very important time in his career, um, but he recognizes that iron sharpens iron. He's taken no pick and fights. He's he wants to compete against the very best in Connor Mills. He's going to get that, um, and you know that. Connor Mills has only got one direction and that's forward and he's going to be pushing the pace on Cameron Kai. Um, he's going to be making it uncomfortable in the ring for him and it's going to be another different experience for Kai. So, you know, it's going to be an exciting match between two top quality cruiserweights. Um, the cruiserweight division is a very exciting place in Rev Pro right now. Um, and, the, you know, the result of this contest could determine who gets the next shot at that undisputed British cruiserweight championship gold. And speaking of that undisputed British Cruiserweight Championship gold, the title is on the line this Sunday in an incredibly exciting triple threat match. The defending champion, Robbie X, it's a triple threat match and his two opponents will be JJ Gale and Callum Newman. And of course, the interesting dynamic in this match is that JJ Gale and Callum Newman had that amicable split earlier this year. Uh, JJ Gale singles career, we can say, has gone quite a bit better than Callum Newman's. But when they get back in the ring this Sunday... Will we see a little bit of the old teamwork that we saw temporarily in the Revolution Rumble? Or as it's a triple threat match, as the title's on the line, is it just every man for himself? Well, it depends what tactics they wish to employ, really, doesn't it? And, it, and, it, and the question is, like, what will favour them the best? Will it be trying to take out each other because they know each other so well? Um or will it be to try and focus on Robbie X and then focus on each other? Um, I, I I genuinely don't know, but I think it's a it's a powder keg waiting to explode because you know with the cruiserweight championship on the line, there's no room for sentiment. There's no room for thinking about past friendships and tag teams and you know sparring together in the training school. You know coming up with routines together, teaming together, having each other's back, etc. Is every man for himself and. Um, and and you really have to be, um, if I can take a, a, a term from Will Caven, you really have to be ruthless in this situation if you're going to become the undisputed British Cruiserweight Champion. And you're really going to have to display signs of maturity if you're going to be able to, to win that championship in this kind of environment. You're going to have to keep a cool head. Um, of course, the dynamic is so different um, than a singles contest. And Robbie X doesn't have to be pinned to uh, or submitted to lose a championship so he loses champion's advantage um i have no doubt that this match is going to be uh you know exciting gripping um we're going to be on the edge of our seats throughout we know what all three men are capable of um we know all three men are deserving as, as having the accolade of being a cruiserweight champion um and it could really come down to the, the simple case of who wants it more you know i think that's uh it may be oversimplifying things, but I think really that is what it could come down to when there's so little to pick between all three. So true. When when a championship is on the line, it just kicks everyone involved into a higher gear. And that isn't the only title match of the night. We also have the Southside Women's Championship up for grabs. The new champion, Sky Smithson, will be defending against a new challenger, Maya Matthews. We saw Maya Matthews win her contest against Danny Luna in Southampton to gain this opportunity. And, you know, some people are calling it an upset. But as you've seen, Maya Matthews' career is on the up. Every time she steps in the ring, she learns from her mistakes. She learns from her losses. She applies them in her next matches. So when she faced Danny Luna, she learned from last time, caught her by surprise. And here you have it. Now she's got a championship opportunity. Absolutely. And it's actually one year to the day of her professional wrestling debut. Um, and I think that, that that may mean a lot as well. You know, it may give her that little bit extra to push herself over the line, so to speak. You know, um, look, I, I can use a football analogy, if you will. Like I look at Liverpool this weekend playing Arsenal. Arsenal dominated them. But then the Anfield crowd got behind Liverpool and they were able to get that massive comeback and manage to draw the game to a piece. Um, and, you know, it took the crowd to get them over the line and it took them playing out their skins and certainly playing on a, an absolute different level than they've been playing for the whole season. And that could be the same for Maya Matthews. You know, she's on home turf, essentially in Portsmouth. She's not a Portsmouth local, but of course she trains at the Portsmouth School of Wrestling. She knows her surroundings very well. She's going to have a hometown crowd absolutely behind her and there's going to be that special magic in the air because well in in her mind because you know it's like i say it's an anniversary you, you know we know we all are a little bit more 
uh, on the top of our games, a little bit more upbeat on our birthdays, you know, um, and uh, on special occasions. Um, and can Maya Matthews mark that one year in professional wrestling, her debut year, her rookie year, can she mark it with her first ever championship? Um She's actually going to be flying in from Barcelona, a, a, a match in Barcelona the day before. And that in and of itself is a sign of, um, you know, how quickly she's come along as a performer um, and the lesson she's learned that she's in demand all around Europe. Um, but there is a question, you know, like, again, many wrestlers, they're used to it. You're Michael Oku's of the world, you know, um, Zack Sabre Juniors, etc. cetera. Um, you know, they're used to coming off planes, stepping straight back into it. You know, so this is going to be a new experience for Maya Matthews. And we have to we have to look at all of this stuff. But listen, it's a championship on the line. It's a huge opportunity for her. But let's not discount vicious Sky Smithson because Sky Smithson has that killer instinct. Sky Smithson won't back down. Um, we saw the way Sky Smithson um was able to dismantle Danny Luna, taking off that protective knee brace. She is, she will do whatever she can to get the advantage. She's been hanging around with the wrong people in Gideon Gray and Lucian Phillips and the Legion. Um, and it's really rubbed off on her um, because the way she conducts herself is, uh, is something else really. And Maya Matthews is going to have to be prepared um, for every dirty trick in the book. Um, and, as you alluded to at the top of this, Geo, Maya Matthews is a student of the game and she's absolutely no doubt done her homework. Um, and I'm sure she will have some game plans in mind to try and counter those tactics of vicious Sky Smithson. But Sky Smithson's a dangerous, dangerous opponent and a dangerous champion. She's going to want to make that first defense a successful one and she's going to want to start um to to cave to uh to cave out a legacy for herself really this is just step one for sky smithson and she's not going to let the sentiment of it being the one year anniversary of maya matthews pro wrestling debut um get in her way also on this card, we have the newest member of the United Empire, Driller Dan Maloney, taking on Michael Oku. Now, this isn't the first time these men have faced off in Revolution Pro Wrestling. The last time we saw these two men in action was at Live in Sheffield, and the stakes couldn't have been higher for Dan Maloney. That match was the last in a series of matches in order for him to get his match against Will Ospreay at York Hall. That match ended up not transpiring. However, an even bigger event happened, an event that's arguably changed the course of Dan Maloney's career. He joined the United Empire, the newest member. Crowns up, I think that's the pose. I can't tell with the Zoom mirror going on. It's confusing me. But as every time Michael Oku and Driller Dan Maloney step into the ring, it's fireworks. They're two of the top competitors in Revolution Pro Wrestling at the very top of their game. And this one has Match of the Night arguably written all over it. Yeah, I mean, anytime you've got two competitors, the caliber of uh, Dan Maloney and Michael Oku, you know you're in for an absolute treat. It's really a can't one of those can't miss pro wrestling matches. Um, they're two of the very best, absolutely at the top of their game. Um, a very different set of circumstances um, to when they last met. Um, of course, uh, Dan Maloney was. And still is on a hell of a roll um, when he was going into that matchup with uh, Michael Oku. Um, at the time, we thought that um, Will Ospreay had inadvertently created a monster in Dan Maloney. Um, that monster mentality, um, the killer instinct, um, the focus that perhaps wasn't there in the past from Maloney. And, and we thought that, you know, it was uh, going to come back to bite Ospreay. But it turned out that the reason... Will Ospreay was trying to get this out of Dan Maloney because he saw the raw potential in Dan Maloney and he wanted to scout him for United Empire. And that's exactly what he's done. Um, as you say, the newest member of the United Empire. And when you join the United Empire, it can change your career. Just ask Aussie Open, you know, just ask Francesco Akira. You know, it's it's a real big deal in the world of professional wrestling. And now Dan Maloney's got another weight, the weight of expectation 
on his shoulders. Um, but listen, against Mike Loku, he's going up with a man. We've not seen him in a Revolution Pro Wrestling ring um, since he won that Revolution Rumble. We know that Mike Loku's on a date with Destiny with the United Empire's dominator, Great O'Khan, who he will compete against for the undisputed British Heavyweight Championship um, at the Epic Encounter event, which obviously we've got more details to announce on that event in the coming days. Um, but, um, you know, it's... Uh, uh, Mike Loke, who's on a roll, you know, um, he won that Revolution Rumble. He's going to want to send a message back to Japan, back to the great Okan um, by defeating um, the United Empire's Dan Maloney. Um, and I guess Mike Loke had a bit of a tough break in the last contest between the pair. Um, but Dan Maloney absolutely capitalized on that opening. Um, and, you know, it's it's going to be a different match. You know, it's going to be a different match without a shadow of a doubt. Um but it's going to be a great professional wrestling match. Um, and I'm I'm very interested to see which way it goes um, and, you know, the way it could shape our future here in Revolution Pro Wrestling. Um, look, I know Mike Loku is an underdog um, when he goes up against the great Okan. Um, but if Mike Loku's taught me one thing, it's, uh, you know, never bet against the underdog, you know, um, because he's he's come out on top time and time again and will this Sunday against Dan Maloney be another one of those occasions. The last two two times they faced in singles competition is Dan Maloney who's got the W. Has Dan Maloney got the number of Michael Oku? Um, it's, you know, it all remains to be seen. Um, but this Sunday, Dan Maloney versus Michael Oku, a match that I personally can't wait to see. And I should add as well, when it comes to Michael Oku, we should not take him for granted. Listen, he's been wowing fans around the world. Um, you know, all, all across the United States of America these past couple of weeks. Um, and those fans realise how lucky we are to to have Mike Loku. And, um, you know, and really, is, this doesn't just, it's, this isn't just limited to Mike Loku. This extends across the entire Revolution Pro Wrestling roster. We are seeing such a high calibre of professional wrestling week in, week out. I think sometimes it's taken for granted. These guys and girls are some of the best wrestlers in the entire world. And we're absolutely privileged to be able to watch them live, up close and personal on a regular basis. Couldn't agree more, Andy. What's that expression? I wish there was a way to know you were in the good old days before they were over. I think that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in the future when it comes to this time period in Revolution Pro Wrestling. And we saw the scene that closed out our last show in Southampton. Shah Samuels and Ricky Knight Jr. having to team up to fend off the Legion. And those four men are going to collide in tag team action this Sunday. It's the Legion versus Shah Samuels and Ricky Knight Jr. RKJ. Yeah, I mean, uh, Shah Samuel's return to Revolution Pro Wrestling couldn't have really come at a better time for Ricky Knight Jr., could it, with his back against the wall? He wants revenge on the Legion. He wants to get away to Rampage Brown, um, who obviously cost him that shot. Uh, he, well, cost him his match, his championship match against the Dominator Great O'Khan. Um, you know, Ricky's our champion was a sound which was ringing around Southampton. Will we hear the same in Portsmouth this Sunday? Um, but listen... Ricky Light Jr., I know he's a man that likes to walk on his own, but he needs friends at this time. And uh, in Shah Samuels, he's found a man who has earned his respect in going toe-to-toe -to -toe for with him in the 229. Um, they had each other's backs um, this past Sunday in Southampton. They seem to have formed quite the formidable uh, unit. And listen... I think that it could well be a very long night for the Legion um, because Ricky Knight Jr. and Shah Samuels are two of the most intense, aggressive professional wrestlers there are. Um, the Legion, no doubt, going to try and throw everything but the kitchen sink at Samuels and Knight Jr. Um, and it's going to be, you know, just another one of those interesting contests to see what shape it takes. Um, Gideon Gray is obviously a weasel. The less said about him, the better. Um but he's durable, you know, he's very durable. Just ask anyone in the Revolution Rumble. It's like, um, I don't know, it's uh I can't I can't think of a great terminology, but like um it's it's almost like a vermin that you throw out the window and he manages to find his way back home. And uh he's a weasel, isn't he? It's a weasel we think. Yeah. And uh so you know, they've got that to contend with and obviously Lucian Phillips a physical poise that he brings to the ring is something else 
Um, I think he's one of the most underrated wrestlers in Revolution Pro Wrestling. Um, Smash Mouth style of pro wrestling as a southpaw, which makes his stance unorthodox, difficult to prepare for. Um, I think the reason he's so underrated is because he doesn't really care about wins or losses. He's a mercenary. He's a guy who is brought in by Gideon Gray to do the dirty work, to soften the man up before the great Okan, or in this instance, before Rampage Brown. Um, and he's happy to continue doing that as long as he's getting paid. But I hope that he sees sense, um, much like Shah Samuels saw sense um, when Shah Samuels turned his back on Gideon. Gideon thought he was putting a fast one on everyone. And it's almost Gideon Gray's own... Um, Gideon Gray's almost outsmarted himself on this one because uh, the match between Shah Samuels and Ricky Knight Jr. was actually signed by Gideon Gray when Gideon Gray thought that Shah Samuels was coming back to join the Legion. And it was that content. And obviously he knew that he had Rampage Brown lined up as well. And he knew that he was going to have to send an equalizer to slow down or to be a brick wall, if you will, in front of RKJ and his pursuit of Rampage Brown. And as a result, he brought in Shah Samuels. But what he didn't bank on was Shah Samuels hasn't forgiven him for the way he sold his contract and the terms of that contract he sold, um, where Gideon Gray, obviously, it was great for Gideon because he used it to fund the United Empire. But for Shah Samuels, it was, a, you know, one of those do not pass go, do not collect 200 pounds. You're gone right now situations. And he wasn't able to say goodbye to everyone. He wasn't able to to finish up the way he would have liked to. And that's all because of Gideon Gray. And Shah Samuels hasn't forgiven, he hasn't forgotten, and he doesn't want to find himself in one of those situations again where someone else is dictating his future. And as a result, you know, he, he's double-crossed Gideon, he double-crossed Phillips, he double-crossed the Legion, um, but he still had that contractual obligation to compete against RKJ, and it was in that contest that that mutual respect for one another was born, and therefore that formidable team to combat the numbers game of the Legion was born. And it's all going to come to a head this Sunday um, in just just what promises to be an absolutely chaotic tag team affair is going to be great. All that bad blood in the ring at one time. That's what pro wrestling magic is made of. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our card for this Sunday. Seven fantastic matches, two championship matches. It's all going down this Sunday at the Portsmouth Guildhall. Tickets available from revolutionprowrestling.com. And as always, check out refproondemand.com to see our par shows and live in Portsmouth as well. Fa thank you, Andy, for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. No problem. We hope to see everyone this Sunday at the Portsmouth Guildhall.